Hi everyone and happy Monday. Um, it is the 5th of June. We have a quite a complex planner page today and to be quite honest with you I've been procrastinating doing it because I wasn't really sure what to do. However I've decided having spoken to my husband about it to grab my Pablo pencils. Now I did say I wasn't going to do a lot of videos with them because of the price and the fact that I know people may not have them but I thought I would give it a go just to show you what they're like and uh, yeah. Now some of them are missing from the set. Um, I've got five next door. I'm working on something with five so I didn't bring them through but basically one's black and there are two blacks two types of black so one's the black I've still got the ivory black a dark blue like the indigo and um, a couple of browns so I don't think it's going to make much difference to this so having a look at this picture I'm trying to think what shall I do now my decision has been that I'm going to do all the green very similarly and then do quite a few different colors for the different bits of flowers. Um, I thought that might look quite bright and cheerful. So I'm just going to start really and see how it pans out. As I say, I haven't really planned anything. So this is the ultramarine. I don't know how easy it is to see. Let's come in closer. I've decided to start with this batch of flowers that sort of runs across the middle of the page here, these. And I'm going to use the ultramarine for the middles and the little dots. So I'm just going to get going. Now this page, by the way, I haven't um, is from World of Flowers. I'm going to go in the middle. I'm going to try and go hard around the edge and a little bit less towards the middle. It's quite a dark colour, so I'm not sure how well it's going to show up. Yeah, this... Um, this page is from World of Flowers. I did this, I remember doing this page um, from my copy of World of Flowers that I've completed um, when I was on holiday and I just took World of Flowers and Polychromos with me and uh, I did the page using the carmines so all the flowers were the same colour and all the leaves I did in the sort of earth green yellowish that sort of tones um, and then when I got home I sort of reworked it a little bit because I hadn't it wasn't as neat as I'd hoped so I just reworked it with the same colours a little bit um, um, I think when I was on holiday the place that I was colouring there was no lamps or anything um, and it was, wasn't particularly bright so I hadn't really seen that it wasn't particularly good colouring if you know what I mean so uh, yeah, now I'm sorry about the light again today. The sun is fully out, so it's all over the desk. So I've had to uh, um, put my lamp on, and I know the paper looks a little bit grey, but uh, I do my best. I'm I really ought to read the manual for my camera and work out whether there's something I can do with the light to make it a bit better. But I think it's better than it used to be. So uh, that's okay. The problem is if I change the setting on my lamp, my camera readjusts. If I put the lamp close to the camera readjusts, because I've got it on auto, because I'm not the best uh, technical person. Ow, this is so hurting. <laughs> there we go. If I use, If I do this book on my own, in my own time, I turn it around so I'm not leaning on the uh, rings but uh, for you guys I think it's a bit distracting if I keep turning it around. Okay so that's our centres done, quite simple and I'm going to use a lighter blue. Um, let's have a look. Um, I'm, oh, I should look at, I've got a swatch sheet here, I should really do, use that. I think the blue is going to work, it's just called blue. Ow. Is it blue? Oh, oh it's, it's going to be a pain. So for these, I'm just going to do a little bit darker near the centre and fade it off towards the edge of the petal. It's really quite a simple technique. Yeah, I thought I'd use the Pablos to tell you a bit about them. I've been using them for a while now, um, since I sort of did my original video with them. 
Um, I'm really liking them. I am now my polychromos have always been my my favorite pencils and as much as I love trying other brands um if I if someone had said to me you can only have one brand which would you have I would have said polys but Pablo's I might change my mind partly because there are a few more um, pastel tones in here which is always useful so there's a pastel blue um there is a sort of pale pinks not really pastel but quite pale um there isn't there's a very pale light green as well a bit lighter than you get in the polys so that is nice um there aren't many dark brown a few but there's not quite you don't get the browns like in the polys you get the walnut brown the van dyke brown those ones you don't really get those sorts of tones but you do get a brownie beige which is like um almost like a french gray from the prismas so that's rather nice i like a brownish gray color which you don't get in polychromos um there are a few really pale yellows in this set which i'm not a fan of um pale yellows but I'm not really a yellowy person, so that's potentially why. Um, so that, yeah, those aren't, aren't my favourites. But you can buy them open stock, which is always very useful. But you can with all the um, expensive brands anyway. Um, the cheaper brands, not so much. And But they are expensive. I was comparing the prices yesterday, actually, because I was chatting to a friend about them and uh, from the place I buy my open stock from which is coloured pencil dot shop um, her polychromos obviously this is a UK price her polychromos are £1.80 and the Pablos are one are uh, £2.20 so there's quite a difference in price now in the UK I did explain this before um, the import duty on things coming from Switzerland, which these are because of Karen Dash, um, is very high. So that puts the prices up. My friend who is comparing prices, I think she was looking at Blick in America, and she said they were about the same um, as polychromos, but obviously polychromos are quite expensive in America anyway, compared to the UK, I think, because um, I think you'll Prisma colours in the UK are cheaper than polychromos, whereas here they're the same price. So it's all, there's a lot of factors which will influence the price. Obviously, shipping, um, demand, and import slash export duty. So, you know, the prices are going to vary a lot. And then when we come to other parts of the world, like Australia, again, that's very different all over again. I think you get cheaper prices on things coming from China and Japan than we do but when it comes from Europe it's ultra expensive so uh, it's uh, yeah it's worth always just checking and also always check for a sale you know if you're buying open stock it's quite difficult to find bargain prices but when you're buying a tin um, sometimes you can find them on sale maybe on Amazon and um, people get a bit wary about Amazon and fakes and things like that but I'm not aware it's a huge problem actually I did spot some fakes today not on Amazon it was a bit upsetting I'll tell you about that it was um I went on to Timu someone said they've got some cheap pencils from Timu T-E-M-U it's a fairly new site that's launched in the UK and it's a bit like AliExpress I think it just has everything you can imagine clothes um, homeware etc and there's an arts and crafts section and they said they got some pencils and I'm sure um, and they said the Brute Foon and Metallics were on there and I'm sure that was all perfectly fine it, that wasn't that that upset me it was that I found Johanna Basford books on there and they were 12 page books of Lost Ocean, Secret Garden and um, Enchanted Forest they were not her they were copies of some of her pictures bound into a book on very thin paper. Now I'm not necessarily blaming Timu because they probably just got them in from a wholesaler. Although, you know, it is really important they should have checked. And I know people get these also sometimes free with a big pack of pencils. They'll get a little copy of Lost Ocean or something, but they're not 
um, the genuine book because Johanna would never put out a book on really thin paper like that so uh, that was a bit of a shame I, was, I, I need to report it to her publishers actually but I don't know if they've got much power to do anything about it but that's that's what you need to do if you see a fake um, now Secret Garden Enchanted Forest were with a different publisher to Lost Ocean so I need to go to both but rather than going straight to Johanna who she has nothing to do with it really um, go to her publishers so I think um, I can't remember who they were someone Lawrence I think for the but of course I don't it's the it was the American version of Enchanted Forest so I don't know whether it's the American publishers need to be contacted sorry my nose is running so I'm not sure but anyway yeah, I always find it a bit sad when I see rip-offs of books and things. And people buy them innocently, having absolutely no idea. And then it gives the artist a bad impression. And there were many more otters as well, and I don't know whether they were genuine or not. Um, I don't know enough about Millie Marotta, because they were small-sized books, and I think I've seen some of her books in a smaller size. Whereas Johanna Basford doesn't do small-sized books with... The original title so she doesn't do a small size book of Lost Ocean at all and the small size books of Secret Garden and Enchanted Forest are called Miniature Secret Garden and Miniature Enchanted Forest and they're the full book all the pic extra pictures than on the um, original and um, with um, her normal thickness of paper right there's our flowers I what I want to do Let's just go over with a lighter blue. I'm just trying to pick whether I want... I think the pastel blue might work. There is a lighter blue than this, but I just feel that this the tone of this one matches in well. Now you can see how these need layering up. They're not, um, they're not like Prismacolor. You can't just push your heavy layer down. Well, you probably could, but um, they're, they're more of a layering pencil, so you're going to have to put several layers down to get rid of the um, white paper if you want to get rid of the white paper of course so uh, you're not going to just be able to put down one layer and get a nice um, finished look um, if you like a sort of intense colour but I'm used to that but I do feel they're a bit softer than polychromo still um, which is nice um, breakage wise I haven't struggled at all but I haven't sharpened them a lot so um, for me it's still early days to report back on that um, I've been using sharpening them in just a standard um, my usual little barrel Stedler Norris sharpener and they seem to have been fine um, they were when I got them they were sharpened with a dowel I think or something similar sharpener to that with a nice long point and uh, I should um, I did do a few with the dowel but I get a bit lazy to turn the handle where's the barrel it's much quicker also um, it's a bit noisy the dowel so if, if someone's talking to me I was on the phone actually so I thought I'd better not also I didn't have well, I did have spare hands I stuck the phone under my neck in my neck neck which is a bit naughty but um, I, it was too noisy so here are our blue ones nearly done and uh, what I'm going to do with the greenery on this page the um, leaves and branches I'm going to do them all in the same mix of colours so that I don't have to um, um, I think it'll work better because I'm doing all my flowers in different colours I think keeping the greenery the same helps it look less of a big mishmash. Another way though, if you want a sort of idea, if you don't want to keep your greenery the same, put a bit of the colour of your flower into the greenery that's going near that flower and then it ties it together with it. I know it sounds a bit odd, putting a bit of blue, but blue works with green. Just maybe on the tip, on the base, something like that, once it's done you barely notice. My last bit is these buds. I'm just going to do this in the darkest colour which was our ultramarine. Um, let's make sure they're all in shot.
I'm going to try, I'm not going to do more than one colour on these because I want them to be quite dark. In my experience, buds are dark. I was looking at some really pretty flowers. Um, where were, oh yeah, in the supermarket. In the cut flowers, they had some peonies. And I said to my husband, I'd love a peony in our garden. Um, I don't like them as cut flowers because they don't last. I think they're so beautiful. Now we've got these two now, which are the same flower. And this bit, oddly, is on the same stem. So I think these three are all the same plant. So I'm only going to do one, I think, because they're quite big. Now this one has got splits in the petal, and this one hasn't though. But I'm I'm going to do this slightly smaller one, and I'm not I'm going to ignore the split so that it works with the big one. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do sort of ready orange colours. Um, I'm going to start with the vermilion. This is our sort of darkest orange. Okay, and I'm going to start. Are we in shot? Yes. At the base, and put in a really deep dark orange. So just layer it up there and then start to fade it like that okay and then do the same for this I'm going to do each um, piece of petal whatever they're called in the same way like that and here the same Just a little bit this slightly fatter one cute that one <laughs> and you see the larger ones I'm going nearer to the tip I'm not too worried about how far up it goes really I just want the effect of a sort of fade in colour I think I want that there like that gosh it's hot today I don't know what the temperature's going to be there's very little breeze I've been out already and in the sun it's really hot it was quite cool in the shade I was out about what time was I out 8, 8.30, something like that. So that's the first colour. Um, what I'm going to do is do the same on here in the bottom. And actually this one, yeah, the same, ignore that little bit. And this one, I'm just going to do all of these in this colour. So I'll show you this one. Um, yes, yeah, so it's really warm. Um, I'm glad I've already been out and back. I did have a sweater on, but um, it's hot in the house. But I've got my dryer, a tumble dryer on to get my towels dry. And uh, that's going to make it warm. My ground floor is usually really cold, so uh, it's going to make it quite warm. Now, my next colour is actually called Flame Red. But it looks to me like a paler orange than the vermilion. I'm just checking. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to use it um, here to sort of continue our orangey colour, like that. Oh, it's quite brownish, isn't it? That's okay. It looks a bit toffee-like. Mm, not really. Toffee isn't orange, is it? What am I thinking? <laughs> Oh dear, it's going slightly mad. But yeah, I went out early and helped husband with the shopping because our supermarket has been um, had a bit of a a lack of stock. If you're from the UK, you'll know which supermarket I mean. I suspect it's been in the news, but um, they were pretty well stocked up. Now again, um, they had some sort of IT issues at their suppliers, so they didn't know what so the deliveries didn't happen. So it's all a bit of a mess, really. The staff were quite um, concerned. Um, now I'm going to use the... What's that? The Fast Orange to finish it. It's a good name, Fast Orange. Whoop. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, it, I wanted to sort of really bright colour, just to brighten the whole thing up. What I'm going to use. Yeah, so um, so it made um, 
shopping a bit tricky but today they had everything in and I was looking as I say I was looking at the plants but they didn't have any peonies to plant in the garden they only cut ones so uh, we'll have to go to a garden centre or something if we want one the husband firstly thought they were quite hard to look after because he's put me off I thought about having roses and he said well you have to spray them they get black spot and they get black fly and things like that and it's difficult so now this one here I'm going to use this lighter colour for this sort of central bit. I don't really know what's supposed to be going on with this flower. I'm thinking maybe it's supposed to have lost some of its leaves or something. So maybe this is the sort of just the centre bit that's left. I don't know. So I'm just trying to make it a bit darker on these edges. I could have used the other orange, but I haven't. There we go. So that's that one and this one needs to be done in the same way as this one, okay? So I will get round to doing that um, later. Now we also have a few leaves coming through here. Now I don't know what those are from because I haven't got the main picture in front of me. I think I'm just going to pretend they're another bit of this. I'm sure they're not, but it'll just make it easier and it'll all tie together and we'll have a whole section of sort of orange there. Okay, so that's that bit done and now we have oops, this bit here um, I'm going to do this hmm, in let's think excuse me maybe a dark violet I'm thinking might be rather nice um, we've got some really pretty um, colors actually um, I think I'll grab the violet first Oops, and hold it way off shot. Oh, you can see that one maybe. And do, I'm trying to quite work out what's going on with these flowers. I think again, I might sort of ignore this line. So I might just put a really dark bit down here at the base like that. And then fade it up a little bit. And then we'll get another color. I might fade it all the way to the end actually. And then just blend another color in from the top. That might work. There we go. Yeah, it's a Saturday morning. I don't usually record on a Saturday morning, but I've been procrastinating doing this page. And, um, yeah, <laughs> that's it really. I've been procrastinating. So, uh, yeah, I had to record today. But that's okay. I've uh, now I decided what I'm doing with the page. I'm enjoying it, but um, I think when you're not sure, I'm not going to do them all. Um, that one's, but this, these two are a bit confused. Actually, I think I am because some of them are a bit confusing. So I will. So that one is just the same. But this one, I'm thinking that bit there is going to be from the stem maybe that bit that bit so this bit is definitely a bit of the flower like that and I'm thinking if we come around there and around there I think that's the flower there hmm I'm thinking I'm going to go there. I know that round bit looks like it could be attached to the stem, but because we've got all the others have got this mark on, I'm going to do it like that. You don't have to do it like that if you don't feel that's right. Now this one's even more confusing as our stem comes up and stops there. So is all this the flower or is this bit a little bit of stem? I am going to do this bit as if it's its own sort of petal like that and then think about the rest. I think I'm just going to do a purple violet like that. I'm really unsure. is where it stretches my imagination a little bit now this one has this bit I'm assuming that's around the edge of a petal I'm going to leave those bits for 
look at being green, I think, and go around there in the body, like, like that. Just checking, you can actually see what I'm doing. Yep, that's useful. Do that bit, and then this bit. There we go. Now, our other colour, I thought it might be nice to do a slightly um, pinky purple. I'm just having a look at my swatch chart to see what we've got going on. Um, I'm thinking the lilac is might work nicely oops just trying to get it out so this is the lilac it's a little bit pinky let's see how it works so i'm going to start on the top with a heavy layer and then blend it down into that darker color there we go you might want something a little bit paler pink so that it shows up a little bit more but i'm going to do some paler pinks further up so I'm quite happy with this being a little bit darker. That's how I imagined it to be. Well, imagined as best I can. I'm not, uh, can't really picture things. We're getting a new neighbour today, so everyone's on tenterhooks in the square, wondering, because two of the houses have been for sale. Up for sale. Um, the person who's moved out, or um. The one that's coming today, she um, she's just retired and she's moved up north to be with her family who live up there. So that's nice. And uh, she, I've been in touch with her today actually and she's settling in okay. So that's good. And um, the other house that's for sale, they haven't, they've got another few weeks apparently before they will exchange. Um, she um, is selling because she can't do the stairs. She hasn't been living in the house for a while now. She's going to buy a sort of retirement apartment on a ground floor. So, uh, so yeah, it's not like um, people are leaving the neighbourhood because they don't like it. It's just circumstances. And it just happened that they both happened to put their houses for sale at the same time. So this person that's coming we don't know anything about we don't really know anything about the other couple either so it's uh, going to be quite intriguing right we are moving up to here now yeah i'm going to make this bit the last bit that i start today um and then we'll do a second video because there's quite a lot going on and i'm going to leave you a bit of homework <laughs> so we've got these three this one's really simple this one's slightly more complex and this one's a lot more complex. So um, let's get some pencils ready. I'm going to use some pinks. Um, let's have a think. Should we do the centres paler or darker? Hmm. I think we'll do. I'm just looking at what I've got. We'll start with the purplish red. I've got to find it. Here it is and do the centers okay i'm gonna do this one because what i would do is copy this same onto these two okay and i think doing the more complex one is makes sense so let's just pull that out a little bit so this has got two sections this center bit as has this one but this one's only got one i'm going to treat it as if it's just one so i'm going to go all the way around the outside with lots of layers and then a bit less towards the center like that Okay, as simple as that, and the same on those two. Oops, I just dropped the pencil, obviously. Then, um, I'm going to use the light purple to do the next bit. So here it is, light purple. It's a bit blunt. I think I'm going to sharpen it. I'm out. Um, there we go. It's sharpened rather nicely. Um... And I'm going to try and go a little bit darker in the middle and lighter towards the edge. It's a little bit easier doing this with a lighter colour because when the paper shows through, somehow it works better. So basically the same thing all the way around. Okay, oh, another couple of 
sections. So I'm just trying to layer up a little more near the centre and on the edge. Yeah, we're all sort of expecting a removal van to turn up at any minute, but no sign yet. But the person lives quite far away, so it may be that they've got quite a journey first. Um, now, we have an outline. I'm going to ignore that at the minute, but we have another layer out here, which I'm going to do. You could do them as leaves. I'm going to do them as petals. And I'm going to use the same pencil for this layer. Okay, like that. I'm not going to do all of it. I'm just going to do one petal. So slightly start to fade it towards the edge a little bit like that. Okay, and the same all the way around. Then I'm going to pick my lightest colour, which is going to be my pink. Um, just checking, that's the right shade, yes. Pink. Sorry, I don't know if you can see it better when the light's shining off it or not. I can't tell. And I'm going to do this bit in the pink. It's quite similar actually, isn't it? But I'm going to try and put it down quite hard because it is like a border. Okay. All the way around. And I will do the same pink around here. Okay, so for this one, do the same centre. Do the same as that in a bit. But for this one, we just haven't got this colour that's in my hand now, this pink, we haven't got any of that, so we leave it out. Okay, so that's that one. So I am going to stop now. So for your homework, um, you need to do this one. If you haven't coloured along, obviously you need to go back and colour along if, if, if you want to. There's that one to do, and the rest of these this, this pink bit. So it's not too much. Um... And then we'll come back and I will do this one and the honeysuckle and whatever this is and show you how I'm going to do the greens. Um, I would do bumblebee as well. There he is. Um, I'll show you how I'm going to do the greens. I won't do all of those on video either, but I will st get you started on those. So there'll be a second part tomorrow. I think it's too much otherwise to sort of expect you to follow it all along in one go. And uh, and I need a quick break. So <laughs> I'm going to stop. And I will, as I say, I will colour um, the bits that I've missed and uh, share a photo at the end so you can see it so far. And uh, come back tomorrow with the next bit. So thank you very much for watching. Have a super Monday and happy colouring.